All right, folks, this is something of a confession video. As you can see here, this is a Super Soaker XP270. This right here was basically every 90s kid's wet dream, literally. It yep. was a very, very wet dream oh. because, because th that's what this thing did. It got you wet. Uh, and it got other people wet, too, anyone around you. Um, so, uh, this is, uh, as you can see, this thing has seen better days. It's not an, it's not an effective uh, water gun anymore. You can see the nozzle in there. And I want to throw this goddamn thing away. <laughs> and, uh, but I want to make this video first because I want to tell you the story. There's a story, behind, a beautiful story behind this Super Soaker. And uh, it's kind of a, I got to warn you, it's kind of a confession video. Because I did something a bit shady. I'm not terribly proud of it. Who makes this? This is super, well, it's, uh. Is it, is it, uh. Who makes who makes Hasbro or I'm makes not Super sure. Soaker? I will come up. Super Soaker is a trademark. That's not really so much what this video is about. Okay. It's more of a personal sure, story. Yeah, you, you talk about but it. Yeah, we can find that stuff out. But anyway, it was the late nineties or somewhere in somewhere in there, somewhere around two thousand. And uh I had a problem that a lot of kids have, which is that my parents were kind of cheapskates. They basically said, you know, you don't need a, an expensive water gun. Just play with this spray bottle and that's good enough. Like literally, like a spray bottle, like a Windex, like an empty Windex spray bottle. That was their, that was, that was their idea of a water gun for me. So, and I think part of it was that they didn't want me like becoming a nuisance with it. They didn't want me to have like a high powered water gun uh, to be a nuisance but it was also partly that they were just this older farm couple and they didn't really see the point in getting water guns like this. So I never ended up getting one until one summer. And it was actually the last day of summer vacation. Wow. We were at a certain park here in town and uh, there was this kid and he had this, he had this, this uh, super soaker and he was playing on the playground and stuff. And uh, we were about getting ready, ready to leave. And, I saw the the super soaker laying on the ground and the kid was nowhere to be seen. And so I went over to my parents and I said, it looks like the kid abandoned the super soaker. Can I, can we take it? You know, kind of like a finders keepers type of situation. Yeah. And they said, yeah, cause they're perfectly okay. They love free shit. Yeah. And so that was like, that was very, uh, that was very conducive for them. So I took this thing. We went in it, we loaded up into the car. As we were driving away, I saw the kid had come back and I could see him looking around for the thing <laughs> as we were driving away. <laughs> oh wow. I didn't say anything. I didn't I didn't say shit. I basically accidentally stole this kid's water gun. And it was the most fucked up thing about it was that it was the last day of summer vacation, and that was the day that I finally get the water gun that I had been lusting for for months how old were you i had to have been like in my uh somewhere between between 10 and 15 i can't remember i was probably like maybe like 12 13 something like that i'm gonna hold your hand this okay is a professional video and i want you to say forgive me hasbro for i have sinned forgive me hasbro for i might have sinned i took a kid's nerf gun i allegedly took a kid's water gun and I am going to give them back to the dumpster above. Yep, the dumpster above, the recycle bin. I will put this in the recycle bin, despite the fact that verily it has the plastic within has photo degraded to the point beyond being usable and salvageable. But I shall return it to the recycling bin anyway. In the name of Hasbro, we say amen. Amen. There you go. I just want. I'm, I'm pretty good at getting people to forgive their sins. So. Yeah, I feel better now. <laughs> you really should have become a priest, dude. That would have, that would have been chill. I think you would have made a great priest. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, so desperate times, uh, mistakes were made, things happened that. It probably enriched your life more than that punk ass kid's life. Yeah, because it'll probably get another one anyhow. 
Because, yeah, that was, yeah, he was like a city kid who probably all he had to do was go to his parents and get another 20 bucks to get an even better one, you know? Yeah. You know? Still, though, like driving, we're driving away and. You're but, hustling. Uh, hustling a fucking super soaker. You're like, <laughs> yeah, because I was like, it's in the car, it's mine now, you know? <laughs> it's history before me is not, you know, not relevant. It's like. And I think my parents didn't like this kid. I think because he was kind of he was kind of a not quite a not a bully, but kind of a nuisance. Like yeah. he like he, I think maybe they saw him being mean to the other kids or something, and kind of felt like punishing him or something like that. So maybe maybe they it's possible they were kind of in on it. I I you know I don't know if I necessarily block things out, but I don't have the clearest memories of that day. Sure. I mean, basically the highway you got a super soldier. In the context of, you know, I would just do don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. All yeah. I remember is I found a super soaker on the playground, and and it, it, there might have been something shady about it. Like, uh, I'm kind of basically telling you what I think I remember. So, but anyway, if, if that kid happens to be watching, I'm sorry. And if you want it back... <laughs> you can have it. Uh, not good for much of anything anymore. It's about 99.9% plastic. It looks like there are some screws holding it together, some metal you screws. It was made by an engineer from NASA. And yeah, yeah, I read, I, I've, I've read up on that guy. He's, he's pretty cool. Uh, so it's Hasbro, huh? They bought him up. Yeah, they own Nerf too. Nerf too. See, I knew that they were probably related. Yeah. So anyway, uh, about 20 years later, this is my confession video, and uh, I feel better. I feel like we can all put this painful chapter of history behind us, and, and uh, hopefully, uh, despite how degraded the plastic is, maybe it can get recycled, and I can get it the hell out of my storage locker. I'm curious, too, like with this type of device and this type of thing, how does this promote militarism? How does this promote... You know, kind of warrior mindset. Does this encourage kids to, to do to join the military to do that? To this this humanize guns and make it seem like it's more acceptable to shoot somebody with a squirt gun? Perhaps, but there's also the fact that it's just kind of good, clean fun, especially on a hot day when people kind of want to get sprayed because it kind of cools them off, you know. So what if the person you spray is like post-traumatic stress disorder from like being in Iraq? Well, that's a problem. Like you don't you don't shoot a grandpa, you know. <laughs> then he pulls out a real gun yeah. and to take it out you and like listen, four of your closest friends. Listen, Billy, Grandpa was at Normandy, okay? He was uh, in Vietnam. Yeah, he was in Vietnam. They're spraying Agent Orange or something. He was in the Korean War, and you can't don't point it. Don't ever point anything at Grandpa. I don't care whether it's a, a gun or so you don't point. or a pencil. So the bitches ain't take to be alive. Yeah. Then he guns down his grandkids so, and three of their friends. Sometimes grandpa goes to an imaginary place in his head where everything's trying to kill him. <laughs> Just like Jesus. <laughs> so bad. It is bad, so um yeah. But no, I I mean I have nothing against water guns, uh uh but I, you know, I do think that it you know Half by accident, half on purpose. They do kind of encourage uh, militarism. But there's also the fact that that's just kind of what boys are into. Yeah. You know, boys will always be into stuff that... stuff that, that uh, Macho, like army men. Macho, games, mecha vehicles, mechanical game stuff. Game boys. Game boys. And, you know, girls will always be into dolls. And, Aren't you gender profiling? Yep. Total, total... Heteronormative, cis male. It's hormones. Profile. Hormones, baby. Hormones are the way they are. You can't change them only with medical treatments. Huh. You can change, yeah, you can change hormones and, and body parts with medical treatments, but you can't, like, just, you can't deny their, their existence in a, in a person's natural state. In a person, in my natural state, I got testo testosterone flowing through me, and there's no denying that. You look at this beard, you look at this big muscular body, that's what it is. It's testosterone. 
There ain't no denying that to deny that's just to deny biology. You sound like Alex Jones. Yeah. The TSA was sticking their hands down your pants and down the pants of your children. The New World Order trying to trying to shatter your mind. And that's why you Infowars.com. Join me on my website. I can't go on Facebook or Twitter anymore, but you can still <laughs> You can still visit me on Infowars.com. That's still screwed up, but there's still probably like Mines and Gab and those sites probably still allow them to be on there. Yeah. Because Mines is free and open source. They're a non-commercial um, social media network. Yeah. So. I, I, I'm of two minds about it because <laughs> on one hand, he's the, he's the definition of fake news. Yeah. But on the other hand, he's, it, yeah. He still to have the freedom to peddle his bullshit. And, and to say, well, we disagree with this, or we, what What made them think they had the right to deny them him access on their platform? And it's a slippery slope once you start denying one person access to your platform to deny another person access to your platform. And then, you know, yeah. what sort of appeal process do you have with that? You're fucked. You're out. Social media is the new public discourse, and I really feel like it should just be a utility. It should be a public utility that everybody is allowed to use. You know, it's like when you're talking on the phone, you don't get certain words that you say bleeped out just because the telephone company doesn't like it. You know, you, you, just because you're using electricity to uh, charge the batteries for a vibrator or whatever, or, or a sex toy of some kind, the, the, the electric company can't take some kind oh. of moral stance against your how you choose to... Uh, Use the electricity, but I think a lot of it is is it's because it's broadcast out and people are able to project their own message. But even you people said broadcast yourself. When it gives that to the power of the people, there's people in power that don't want to hear those messages, you know. Yeah. Or that they the guy might be legitimately having his head up his ass and it's crazy bad advice, you know. Yeah. But I would, yep. I love freedom of speech and I would rather give crazy ass people the platform and the opportunity to spew their bullshit than to censor them and try to push them underground because then you radicalize them yep. and then you dehumanize that's, them yep and that's what people don't understand and we got pretty far on t off topic in, in this video but um but we uh it ties in the weapons because words are weapons too you know? no no they're not see that's the thing though that's what they want to say is that words, words are weapons. But words are not. Speech is not. Well, I'm saying that people use them as a weapon. I mean, speech. There's free speech, but you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's politicized and it's weaponized. So. Just like this super soaker. <laughs>